All right, hey guys, hope everybody's having a good day so far. Obviously, uh, it's a great day for the Memphis football program and the university. Let me start by saying how excited we are to be able to play in the Montgomery Bowl. Excited to go play in a historic stadium in a wonderful city. Uh, we are going to treat it like an away game and obviously not your typical bowl game, but our young men are excited. Uh, play on the 23rd versus a great opponent, FAU, on national television again. Um, the preparation. Uh, uh, slightly started and will continue uh, as we elevate as we get closer to game day. Obviously, today being signing day, uh, if you will. I don't know if you necessarily call it national signing day anymore, but, uh, you know, we were uh, early signing day, even though that's when most teams uh, do sign their guys. We were able to sign a handful of guys. Uh, we're very excited about the future student athletes here at Memphis. Uh, there are actually quite a few that we are not uh, going to announce until February. They've uh, these, Some of these young men have asked us, who signed uh, NLIs today said they would rather do a, a bigger signing party or announce with some of their teammates in February, which we completely understand and respect um, since that used to be the tradition. Uh, but look, we, we, we felt like we led a lot of needs, uh, different positions, offense, defense, and even special teams. Uh, so the future is very bright and we couldn't be more excited about our bowl game, but also this future Tiger class. Terry, first question. Hey, Coach, before we look forward, let's look back at some of your current players, man. You had some players that got some awards and honors, Kevin, and a, and a, and a noticeable snub. So what's your take on your, your guys who got uh, noticed and recognized by American this week? Look, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for those guys that got the uh, recognition they deserved. Um, you know, certainly uh, we felt like there's a few more that could have been recognized uh, by their peers. But it is, uh, like I told them, I said, you want to go out there and be recognized, go win a bowl game. And I think they understand, you know, the respect that we have for each other. Uh, and that's the most important thing. When we're in that team room, uh, we're out there on the field. It's the respect amongst yourselves and your teammates that know how hard you work and what you're putting in. And all you can do is continue to go in every single day and every single game and, and show it, and put it on tape. And um, our guys don't get too caught up on that. That's the nice thing is that the people that are left are, for the most part, are pretty selfless. And it's not about that. The biggest reward they want to win is the, the bowl game. Christian? Coach, obviously defense was a big priority in the 2021 class. And to get some of these guys like Andrew Jones, Tyro Raby, Greg Rubin locked up early, how big is that? Yeah, look, I mean, it's recruiting is, as I told you guys, it's an everyday deal and it's a constant battle, right? These You're dealing with 17 to 18 year olds that are being reached out to, mailed, called, DM, texted. Uh, FaceTime to, uh, every single day by multiple people. And, you know, the biggest thing for us is we talk about the right fit for them and they, they have the right fit for us as well. And, you know, you build those relationships, those bonds, and they're dynamic players. I, I truly believe that every single guy, we're not sitting there. We didn't sit back today and say, man, ugh, I don't know if we, we've got is that the, really the one we want. I mean, we were just as excited about the, the first guy to send in their allies as the one that sent it the last and uh, every single part, regardless of stars or rankings, we got the right fits for us. And uh, but yeah, you t the names you just mentioned, man, where it's it's been a huge for us to be able to get those type of guys. Um, you know, in the past, you talked about ten years ago that Memphis would struggle to get those type of young men. And we feel like we can go into obviously in the past going to any home, uh, but now zoom into any home and uh, try to get any type of young man that we want, and we'll f compete against anybody. Evan. On that note, Ryan, how pleased were you to be able to get someone like a, <clears throat> like a kid in Pounders who obviously was committed to other schools, but kind of, you know, surprised you guys today. How good is it to kind of see people who are, you know, talking about other schools now considering Memphis and actually signing with Memphis? Yeah, I think that's huge, Evan. All, all I think it does is speaks for where we are on a, a national level, right? When kids are, it, it'd be, and I get, look, our, one of our best players that are players kid named Dustin Woodard, who no one wanted, right? It's like uh, me when I used to go on dates, no one wanted me. And, uh, and uh, the, all it took was one to like me. Um, but, you know, it's kind of nice sometimes when you get these guys uh, that are highly sought after recruits um, and you get to compete. You know, uh, Pounders was a young man that came to visit us. Uh, before the pandemic hit and we were able to spend some time with him and kept that relationship going. Even though if he was committed to other schools, it's about that relationship, the building, the trust, um, understanding what we have to offer um, and, and a good fit uh, for both parties. So uh, I think that's good. You always want to be in those conversations. Like I said, there's 
there's not a school and you guys have known this have known now for five years there's not a single school in the country that i'm not afraid or that we as a program won't be afraid to go toe to toe with uh, not only on the field but in battling and recruiting steven I just wanted to ask, how's the team, I guess, how's the team approaching the bowl game? We've kind of talked over the last few weeks. Some teams are opting now or some some players from across the country are, I guess, a little bit fatigued. But from your from what you've been saying, how is this team, how excited are they about the Montgomery Bowl next week? Yes, yeah, Stephen, you're, you're exactly right. I think we've, we've talked about it every, every week, right? It's the emotions, the attitude of the team and the approach sometimes determines what may occur on a, a Saturday or in our case, a Wednesday coming up. Um, I think these guys um, have the right mindset. They, they want to play. Uh, they're excited about the opportunity. Um, they know, you know a lot of these guys understand the history of what's occurred to Memphis in bowl games. And I think that's huge for them to understand, um, you know, a chance for a lot of these guys to go out as bowl winners. Um, we know FAU is a heck of an opponent. It's also, you know, I can't say if we were playing in January 18th, and a bowl game, obviously, other than a national championship, there are guys would be fired up. I think a lot of us, myself included, are, are excited to play this game uh, sooner than later and uh, go out there and, and give everything we have uh, for our last season game. Christian? Coach, you just talked a little bit about McKaylin Pounders, and you also mentioned Dustin Woodard, which is interesting because you've had a lot of undersized offensive linemen since you've been at Memphis. So, Getting a guy like McKaylin, 6'6", 300 pounds, brings a ton of size. And obviously, you guys have tried to get bigger on both sides of the ball because with the defense in a 3-4, you need bigger DNs and nose tackles. Uh, so it's kind of been a theme on both sides of the ball. But with McKaylin specifically, uh, what do you see his ceiling being? I know he has, isn't on campus yet, but but how good can he be uh, in this system? Yeah, I think he's, as you guys know, we we run every type of scheme. Uh, you know, we, we actually drop back pass. We do quick game. We get our tackles out on screens. Um, you know, we ha have every variation of run game. Obviously, this year not as successful as years past, and maybe that's one of the reasons why we went out and got uh, two tackles that we're really excited about, him and Royce White. I mean, you guys, one of the names that doesn't get mentioned enough is Royce, right? One of our very our very first committed uh, player who actually got major, major power five offers the last three weeks and has turned them all down to stay with us. In fact, he was uh, probably, when it's all said and done, one of the highest recruited kids uh, that's been committed to us. So, you know, really honored that Royce stuck with this commitment and he, he has a huge upside as well. But with, with McKaylin as well, I mean, you just talk about a massive human uh, that can do so much. You're right, we, you know, to be able to get some movement in the run game, uh, big body guys that have some nastiness to him, the way he plays, obviously a local guy. Um, we feel like the sky's the limit for both those tackles. We really do. And I do think they're both tackles. Um, and you get a chance, it, it, as you guys know, it doesn't happen overnight, but to develop these young men and uh, see what they're able to do. But uh, it, as you guys know, you can never get a good enough tackles. Um, constantly got to work at it, and we're excited to add those two to the offensive line. Brian? Hey, Coach, uh, was this recruiting class the most difficult you've ever experienced because of the pandemic, or was the pandemic – you know, a great equalizer because nobody could have kids on campus and you had to really build that trust, uh, you know, with coaches and, you know, parents and players. Yeah, Brian, that's a great question. For me personally, um, as I mentioned to you guys before, is I, I want to be able to sit down with a, a, a student athlete or a prospective student athlete and look them in the eye, talk to the guidance counselor face to face, sit down with the coach and truly get a feel for the character of a young man and also what is occurring. So, those things I, I don't like to do. So that's one of those things we try to do as much <laughs> face to face, even if it's via video uh, interactions we can. Um, but, you know, I don't, as when we talk about an equalizer, we have so many wonderful things to sell here, right? we got great facilities, a new indoor, uh, of tremendous coaching staff. I, I like to be able to sit down with parents and talk to them uh, face to face and tell them about how we can make their son a, a better person on and off the field. And I think those things go a long way. Um, when a lot of prospects come to a place at campus, you know, we always hear those stories. Sometimes a head coach just waves at them and doesn't have time for them. But to me, I think you got to dwell all the way in. So there's been a lot of difficulties from this. And, you know, a question you guys asked, Brian, you may have even asked this about four months ago, but there's a lot of things that we're going to take from the way we recruited this year um, and, you know, carry them over in the future. Now I hope we're able to go into schools and do those things, but you learn from that and, and see how you can use it to your advantage, uh, you know, in the future years. Terry? 
Coach, I know you're an old school guy, man. I know you, it's one thing looking at film, but I know you like to look at a player in person. How hard is it to evaluate that talent? And you got, you know, so many guys, you got seven, seven states represented in this class. So how hard was it to do that by film versus not doing it in person? Yeah, Terry. So, you know, normally you, you get to watch a film, right? You watch a highlight film. And then I also like to watch game film. And a lot of coaches will just go based off a highlight film. I like to watch some game film to see how they are and play and play out, right? We could all go put together brief highlights. But, uh, and then you got to, then you want to go see this person play live and do those things, right? Watch them practice. See how they take coaching, see how they move around. All the stuff you can't get on film. Get a verified size, right? I mean, it's, it's like, uh, I won't say Jonah is dating profile, but it's like saying that you're, yes, you know, Jonah's saying he's 6'3", you know, 175 pound athletic body. And then you, you see him in person. So a lot of these guys you want to see face to face and, uh, and get a real feel for it because sometimes uh, a 17 or 16 year old may fib on their exact size on it. But uh, that's part of it. Uh, we, we do prefer, to, sorry, Jonah's laughing. Uh, we do prefer to see guys face to face. So, but Terry, what it did is, you know, I've watched more film over and over and over on these guys. I can't, I mean, you'd watch a kid's highlight film 10 times and no, okay, we like the further evaluation. Well, okay, then it's game film, but then you don't get to go see that person. And then you're asking, sometimes you're asking these kids, hey, if they already have it, do you have workout video? You know, if they're not playing this year, and uh, you, you got to dwell in as best you can, given the uh, restrictions that were put on this year. Evan? So two things. One, it seemed like the recruiting in state was a big priority for you. Obviously, the national pipeline something you established. How much of a priority was that with this class in second? Could you talk to the, about the two Texas guys, uh, Hennigan and Jones? Because obviously you've had some success with, with some Texas guys before, but Hennigan and Jones – or Hennigan and uh, Martin, excuse me, yeah. J.D. Martin, excuse me. Uh, what did they bring in, and what did you guys like about them? Yeah, let's start talking about the in-state guys. I think you always want to be able to find in-state talent uh, for two reasons, right? Uh, Evan, with like we've talked about, this transfer portal, all the stuff that's going to occur, sometimes the hardest thing is when a freshman comes on campus is being far from home. And if you can get guys that are from this region, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier, right? Because uh, whether their home is three hours away in Nashville or their home happens to be here in Memphis, um, sometimes it makes it a little, that transition uh, maybe a little bit easier. And uh, we always want to make the state our priority. Obviously, the city, there's so many talented uh, young men here in this area and this region, and we've got great connections there. Uh, and especially you're like this where we weren't able to get out there. I may not know a, a head coach in California, right? Um, but I know plenty of these head coaches in, in Nashville and I can call them and say, okay, tell me about this. Okay. Again, tell me in then real in good. Look, we're, we're going to have great relationships with all high school coaches and guidance counselors, all that stuff. But if there's places I've been in the past or I've been to a game, um, that stuff helps, you know, like I'll tell you how I noticed Royce White. I was actually recruiting Jonah Gamble, uh, one of our offensive linemen. I was at their game. I look over and, and when Jonah was on the sideline, I see Royce Wright over there. I said, holy cow, who's this guy? You know, so um, that's part of it. But, uh, you know, we're always going to keep the state and the city of Memphis a priority for us. And then the Texas kids, you know, we've had some success down in Texas. Obviously, we know it's a highly recruited area, uh, state, as it should be. You know, Seth Hennigan is a, a quarterback that's won a lot of football games and played at a really high level. And I think, you know, if you watch his film from this year, you see him improve every single game, and that's huge. He's a football junkie. His dad's the head coach. Um, he absolutely loves football. And then J.P. Martin, uh, you, you, maybe you guys may have him listed as Alvin, but he goes by J.P. Um, is one of those running backs we hope that can get us, you know, has a very bright future here. We've been known as in the past as being running back you. Um, he's a dynamic guy that gets the ball in the backfield, that has speed, um, has great burst, short area quickness. Um, he, he's got what you want. I think he's a total package and a running back. And uh, so to be able to get those two offensive weapons out of Texas, and, you know, Seth is one of those young men that will actually join us here. Um, let's knock on when he's able to play in the state championship, but after he plays – wins that state championship Seth will be joining us I think six days later starting classes here so their season hopefully extends all the way through January but uh, glad to add those two guys as well you just reminded me how many guys do you expect to enroll in the spring um, I think that we'll have as far as true NLA signees Evan we'll probably have seven or eight that will be here uh, hopefully in January in, sure. in this day and age you know so much of it and when there's young men with the pandemic that are supposed to finish up classes 
this week, but then uh, even in Shelby County, some of the school stuff got pushed to like January 16th. Well, that's the day we start. We got to make sure everything's, you know, so we're keeping our fingers crossed so we'll get all the paperwork done. Christian? Coach, I have a question about two guys that have intrigued me for quite a while now, and I think they've kind of went under the radar uh, since they committed and just aren't really talked about enough. And to me, that's Jawan Odoms and Arrington McCray. I actually got a chance to watch Arrington in, in person uh, during 7-on-7 seven seven and was blown away by his ability. Uh, and Jawan, with his versatility, ability to play both sides of the ball, and obvious, the obvious size, 6'2", 185 pounds. Uh, what did those guys bring, and are you glad they flew under the radar and nobody else tried to really get involved there? Yeah, and, you know, th there may be, and I hate to say this, you always feel unfortunate, like, you know, Arrington had a little bit of a knee issue this year. He's completely healthy now, and some of these guys that we were able to sign locally that weren't able to play ball that day <laughs> have helped us let these guys fly under the radar. But let's start with Juwan Odoms. Uh, he is a long, rangy athlete, and uh, he's got great ball skills. We're going to look at him at the DB position, whether it be corner or safety. I think he has the ability to play both. Uh, obviously played at a high level, uh, in essence, a local guy. I like to consider that not, not too far down the road. Um, but he is a, a young man that, you know, is, is looks pretty play ball at a high level. I think, like I said, he has the ability to play both corner and safety. He's got great hips, good foot speed. Uh, and I think that's unique. And then you talk about Arrington McCray. Uh, he's a young man that weighs about 227 pounds, but runs, like he weighs about 205. I mean, he's got the great hands. He's got Sean Dyke's running ability. I'm not comparing him to him, but that type of route running ability, uh, fantastic player. And, you know, where he really developed this year was as a blocker. Um, so he's going to be, he's not the 6'5", you know, 250 pound tight end. He's more of that H back that we've been able to use, but he's got a little bit more size than the guys we've had in the past. Um, and he is a dynamic player. And Arrington's one of those young men that will also be here in January. Uh, so he'll get thrown right into the mix this spring as well. Clayton. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, just between this year with an, uh, an odd uh, way to go about recruiting and then last year you, um, you know, getting the job and having to get a recruiting class, uh, you know, signed for the early period, are you, um, does it feel like you've been swinging a weighted bat the last couple of years when it comes to recruiting? And are you looking forward to when you can, you know, take the donut off essentially? <laughs> yeah, Clayton, that's an interesting way to put it, you know. I, I think about this and we, this we've had this, I guess it's pretty well documented. Right. So when I interview when I was named interim head coach, right. And I had to do the cotton ball press conference. Well, that night I, I arrived three hours late uh, to Braxton Alford, who was a, a, you know, a player on our team to his house for dinner. So I was supposed to be there at six o'clock. I arrived shortly after nine o'clock at night for dinner. And so we had cold steaks off the grill at his house. And ever since then, it's been hit it and get it right. I mean, then I was on flights and not sleeping and, and trying to think about, like I said, I'd never been putting preparation into preparing for interviewing for this job, interviewed for the job. Even the morning I interviewed for my job that evening, I was hitting up high school kids, right? I was in Devontae Nelson's high school um, the same day I interviewed for this job. And then from there, was right when I got done with the press conference, you know, just over a year ago today, as some of you guys pointed out, which I appreciate, um, then that, that, that afternoon, I literally sprinted over to the, the Marriott and met with a bunch of recruits on official visits. And so many of those guys, most of those guys signed with us then. And then it's just, it's, so it's been go, 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 which I absolutely love. And that's part of college football. Uh, it's been unique. It's been different. And then all of a sudden you get into this year and very limited on who you were able to bring on campus. Uh, your first season, I would love to have a full stands and Liberty Bowl show everybody the uniqueness, which what makes Memphis so special. Um, and, you know, be around our players, be around our coaches. Uh, a lot of teams are going, you know, most, every team is going through it. It's obviously different with the way it started. And, uh, you know, hopefully we take a deep breath and, you know, with obviously the NCAA dead period being extended all the way to April 15th, uh, recruiting still not going to look the same. And I think guys, it's going to be with this transfer portal with, um, you know, initial scholarships, it, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be unique. I don't know if, if there'll be, I don't know if the word normal is right, but if there'll be a settled down effect probably for about another year and a half, and then maybe we can take a deep breath and say, okay, maybe we can get back to more traditional recruiting and go from there. But, hey, we'll keep running around like our hair's on fire and make sure we get the right people here. Two more, starting with Brian. Hey, Coach. <clears throat> Talk a little bit more about the Royce White. When he uh, committed, uh, he told us that uh, right before the pandemic he visited and the offensive and defensive uh, coaches were kind of like battling over him. And uh, was it you that came in that said, no, he's going to be on the offense? Or how, how did that come about? 
Yeah, look, it's, it's that's when you got these players like Juwan Holmes, Tyrell Rabby, and then obviously Royce White that played both sides of the ball at a high level. It's good to be wanted, right? You know, when Coach Pope uh, wants him and Coach Bridge want him, um, you know, ultimately I, I think he's better suited as an offensive tackle. And he is a guy like, as you well know, he was our first commit, and uh, and he's not one that went out there and publicized all these other offers. He got he got a ton of offers, just like big time offensive tackles do. And he kept getting hit up and hit up even last night. Um, SEC schools offering him, telling him, "Hey, you need to decommit and come to this school." And he stayed the course. And just so he's a, a unique young man that uh, we're so intrigued by and so excited about. He's got a very, very high ceiling. Um, yeah, like I said, I had the ability to see him play live when I saw him play against Jonah Gamble a few years back. And uh, you know, just to be able to watch his growth and uh, know that. But yeah. He's going to be an offensive tackle for us, and uh, ultimately, I got to have that final say in that because uh, I do spend a little bit more of my time with the offense. So uh, he's going to be a great, great Tiger, and he's also another guy that will be here in January as well. Terry, last question. Hey, just some administrative things. Up uh, first of all, what's your plan to going down to Birmingham? I mean, Montgomery driving down to Birmingham, and when will you know officially when you can if you're going to have a regular spring practice this year? Yep. So, Terry, we're going to treat this just like an away game. Our plan right now, obviously, I've got to continue to have discussions with Laird Beach and Jeff Crane, but our plan is to uh, head out on a Friday, uh, excuse me, on a Tuesday, <laughs> Get a, <laughs> treat it like a Friday. Uh, we'll do our morning practice here, then head out um, to Montgomery, fly out, get there, you know, do a little walkthrough at the stadium, check into the hotel, uh, which is right near the stadium, do our normal meetings, and then treat it like a normal game day, right? Uh, you know, uh, that Wednesday evening, um, play the game and then fly home uh, back after that game, hopefully with a, a winning trophy uh, sitting next to me in the plane. And then spring practice, as far as we know, um, Terry, again, the NCAA can change things at any minute. The, the plan is to be able to do it. Um, and, you know, obviously there'll probably be certain protocols in place as well, just like when we come back um, with our, our, our winter workouts. So. Um, we take it one day at a time approach. I'll, I'll, I have looked ahead. I've actually handed out a calendar that has what we're doing every single day uh, up until um, really next June. Uh, but, it, you know, I'm sure a lot of that will change from here to then. But the plan is in place to have a normal spring. Where's your vacation spot after the, after the bowl game? Where, where are you going and what are you doing? Yeah, you know, I think on the 24th, uh, I, I, I haven't slept in about a year. Um, so, you know, maybe I'll have an adult beverage and, and sleep for maybe six or seven hours, which would be fantastic, and then wake up and start recruiting again. So that's that's my vacation plans. <laughs>